Please rise for the opening prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswaji, our Guru, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Divine Mother, beloved Guru, help us to feel your loving presence on the altar of our constant peace and in the joy that springs from deep meditation. Receive our love, receive our gratitude. Om, peace, Amen. Please be seated. So we begin our service this meditation. Let us consciously let go of all thoughts and cares of this world, letting go of all worries and concerns, going deep within with the awareness that our beloved Guru, Divine Mother, are eagerly waiting to embrace us with their love. Let us focus at the point between the eyebrows. It's important to be mentally and physically relaxed, so let us practice simple breathing exercise. We inhale the peace and love of God, hold the tensions, and then exhale all tensions, mental and physical. So let us inhale, tense the body, and exhale. One more time, inhale. One last time. Some words from Sri Dayamata. She says, every morning and night in meditation, forget everything else and deeply, deeply call on God. Talk to Him in the language of your heart. Unburden yourself. No matter what your faults, do not be afraid to go to Him. He knows what we are, nothing is hidden from Him. But remember that He is love itself, so compassionate, so understanding. God knows how strong is the delusion He has put into this world. To help us escape it, He is urging us unceasingly, look to me, look to me, give me your love, cling to me. Now let us chant Door of My Heart. It's on page 15 in the booklet. Door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee, O door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me, O wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me. Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Night and day, night and day, 
I look for thee night and day, O oh, night and day, night and day. I look for thee night and day, door of my heart. Open wide, I keep for thee, O oh, door of my heart. Open wide, I keep for thee. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come? Just for once come to me. Oh, wilt thou come, wilt thou come? Just for once come to me. Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Night and day, night and day, I look for thee night and day, O oh, night and day, night and day, I look for thee night and day, door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee, door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee, wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me. Wilt thou come, wilt thou come, just for once come to me. Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Will my days fly away without seeing thee, my Lord? Night and day, night and day, I look for thee night and day, night and day, night and day, I look for thee night and day. Door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee, door of my heart, open wide I keep for thee.
morning, everyone. Again, welcome to our Sunday service. It's a joy to be with you. So our subject this morning is ways to conquer fear. In 1920, the Congress of Religion took place in Boston, and Paramahansa Yogananda, as we know, was invited to represent his beloved India at that Congress. And in his maiden speech, he talked about the signs of religion. And he said, Dad, what connects all of us is that we all want to be happy, lastingly happy. But he said, most people do not know how to be truly happy. And then he points out, yet by following the signs of yoga, everyone can realize in time the indwelling, blissful nature of the soul. And then he also points out that the impermanence of the world has but one purpose, to remind us to seek our happiness within. You know, we tried so hard for so many lives to be happy from the things outside, but now more and more we realize that it has its place to enjoy life. But most of all, we have to develop our inner happiness. And this is why the great master, Guruji, tells us, come on earth to guide us to help create that inner portable paradise. I like this expression so much, portable paradise. To become a smile millionaire. And they remind us that the forgetfulness of God is the root cause of all fears worries, and disappointments. But if we strive to be in tune with God, more and more we realize that we are connected to the source of all happiness, of all joy, of all wisdom. Some years ago, I received a call from my sister in Austria, and she wanted to share quite an unsettling experience she just encountered. She said, I was just driving, going shopping. And while she was in the car, she was just reflecting on how good life is for her. Grateful for a wonderful family, good husband and child, which is healthy, having a wonderful profession, job, very fulfilling. Their own house, financially, everything seemed to be almost perfect. And as she was dwelling on that with deep gratitude, suddenly she felt this tremendous emptiness and loneliness and fear. And she could not understand why it is like this why she has this experience. And she's, she told me she almost had an accident because it was such a shock. And so she called me, her big brother, hoping that I could answer. And fortunately, she had just started with the SRF lessons, and I knew a little bit of Guru to know that this was really a blessed experience. And I said to her, you know, our guru says, no matter what the world gives you, your heart will still wish for God. And so I told her, your soul is calling out, what about me? You have all those beautiful things which are good to have, leading a harmonious life. But what about the stillness the soul is longing for? What about meditation? And she understood. And I, I quoted to her some words from our guru when he says that happiness depends to some extent upon external conditions, but chiefly upon mental attitudes. And he says, in order to be happy, one should have good health, a well-balanced mind, a prospered life, 
the right work, a thankful heart. And I told you, see, you, you seem to have all those things, but, and above all, our Guru says, wisdom or knowledge of God. And so she said, all right, I will, I will try to do a little more of meditation. And so she started, and things started to improve. And above all else, I also told her that just make the Guru the companion of your life. You know, wherever you go, take him with you. Share with him your joys, your fears, your, your worries. And that she felt easier to do. And so her life really became much more balanced and happy. Now the Bible passage from St. John. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And Paramahansa's commentary. He says, Unlike the world which gives only perishable things, Jesus left with his disciples imperishable Christ's peace. That peace he gave to all who were able to attain it so that they could enjoy it always in meditation. And then Guruji points out that the heart is the center of emotions. And so Jesus referred to it in telling his disciples to keep their feelings free from destructive vibrations of restlessness and fear so that the lake of our consciousness might remain calm to reflect the Christ consciousness within. And we all know when we, when we are calm, when we had a good meditation, everything opens up. We see things we have not seen before. We see the beauty of life. And when challenges come into our life and we are more calm, it is much easier for God to guide us, to get through to us. And this is why the formula our Guru gives us is to be, to strive to be actively calm in meditation and calmly active in our daily life. And as we know, we try to live this principle. And we see that more and more our life is improving because we balance the worldly efforts with the spiritual. Vidyamata once said, because we are all part of him, we shall never feel complete until we realize our oneness with him. And then she says, this does not mean that everyone has to become a renunciant. Here within the heart, she says, is the real hermitage, the true temple of renunciation. And then she explains and she says, to me, renunciation simply means, Lord, you first, and then the world. So in this way, we all can be true renunciants. And then Guruji says, we play our role of a divine child rightly, and we don't need to go more out to prove it. And Minali Mata, her divine friend of Sridhar Mata, she, she reminded us of the motto Sridhar Mata had for her life, which really is that being calmly active and actively calm. But she put it with the following words. She said, love, service, courage, faith. And she said that these were the principles she patterned all her life. And she explains that love means for her, of course, that first we give God our love. 
we seek Him in the stillness of meditation. Fill us with His presence. Fill us with His kindness, sweetness, and wisdom. And then she points out that love is, love wants to express itself. It's not passive. Like Gorgi says, you know, love expresses it, itself in usefulness. And so this is when service comes in. Service can have so many aspects. And part of this is also that true service gives us freedom as we serve others. And Master says, and meditation brings happiness. And in order to truly serve, we need courage and faith. And I can very much relate to this. Some years ago, in fact, it was like almost 30 years ago, I was transferred to Hidden Valley Ashram to be responsible for the kitchen and some parts of the garden. And I just had come to Mother Center and I so much enjoyed being there. So being suddenly transferred was difficult. And I tried to get out of it. <laughs> you know, when, when God gives us some discipline and really love because he knows what we need, but it can be sometimes tough. Now we get comfortable where we are, and suddenly he says, okay, now let's go to the next level. And so after arriving at our beautiful Hidden Valley Ashram, and I always, in the background of my mind, I truly knew beyond any doubt that Master is guiding my life. So I always fell back on that. And I knew that everything would be all right. However, I was very glad when I arrived there and there was Joe. Joe Ferdy, who helped establish the kitchen in Hidden Valley Ashram there. He was already in his early 80s. And... It was amazing. The meals, everything was always in time, and he always found time also to meditate and to be in all the services. He was truly an inspiration. I called him Joe the Rock, <laughs> because you know he gave such encouragement to me, because I, I was afraid, I was fearful how to deal with this new challenge, this new role. But having him around, everything was fine. So in my meditation, I prayed that he may have a long life <laughs> <laughs> so that he will be with us for a long time. was a little bit selfish, too. <laughs> and so one day, we were sitting down, and we just talked. And he shared with me that you know, it was not always like that. In the late 40s, he was serving as associate chef at the Biltmore Hotel. And he very much disliked his job. For whatever reason, he just, at some point, could not stand it anymore. And this is when he started to come on the path. He was searching. And so he disliked it so much that his skin had broken out into rashes. But you know, when we go through these difficult times, we're looking for answers. And so he did look for answers and he attended Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood temple. And he was looking for a way out. And so he asked the minister, if you could please ask the master, you know, master was still in his body, if you would give him some guidance what he should do next. And so the minister said, I will ask the master. And Joe couldn't wait for, for the week to pass. And the next service, he was there. 
And then towards the end, after the minister was greeting everyone, he approached him and he said, so did you ask the master? And he said, yes, I did. And so he said, well, what did he say? And of course, Joe was expecting compassion and a simple answer, which truly he received. And so the minister, I always thought that he had a slight smile on his lips when he said to Joe, learn to love cooking with all your might and everything will be well with you. And Joe, expecting a different kind of guidance, was shocked, but yet he knew that Master was right, that his attitude was off. So he said, the fault is with me, not with the cooking, not with the Biltmore Hotel. I can make the change, and so he did. It took him some time, but gradually his rashes disappeared, and he became more happy. And I cannot tell you how much this story helped me. So Guruji was telling me also, learn to love cooking <laughs> with all your might, and everything will be fine. And so then one year later, Joe left. He wanted to live in a nice house. And so I was ready, you know, to take over his role. And so love, Guruji points out, is one of the greatest stimulants to the will. Whatever I do, I do with the greatest love I have in me. Try this and you will see that you do not become fatigued at all. Love is one of the greatest stimulants to the will. Under the influence of love, the will can do almost anything. And we know that. You know, when we're in love, the sky is the limit. I came across a survey about serving, volunteering, being, you know, reaching out, helping others, and it was very interesting. It says the same thing as our guru. When we reach out to others, when we serve others, there's an immediate feeling that we feel well. Increased energy and a lasting feeling of self-worth. And I thought, why is it like this? Because the soul begins to express its true nature through us. You know, when we reach out, when we look after each other, this is our soul quality. It brings also, it says in this survey, a sharp reduction of stress and pain, as it helps to release the natural painkillers, endorphins, which I thought was just another word for God flowing through us. You know, when, when we become a channel, then God begins to flow. And as a result, we begin to feel good about ourselves. And then finally, in the survey, it says, it is important, however, that when we give freely, we should do so without expecting results. It's very much like our guru tells us. You know, your greatest contribution is your effort. That's your victory, but don't worry about the result. Another way to reduce fear, concerns, worries in the world is to keep smiling. And even when we don't feel like smiling, <laughs> because Master says a sincere smile draws the healing light of God into our being, even more so when we learn to smile from the soul, which we can do more and more when we, you know, go deep in meditation and make God part of our life. Recently, I was really observing the power of the smile when, you know, more consciously going, mingling with my brothers at work, just to really make an effort. 
And then I remembered one incident when, it was quite some years ago, we have some kind of training, speaker training, and in those days, we needed to give a presentation, a Sunday service to the monks, <laughs> which is much easier to talk to you. Even so, they're all wonderful, but you know, you become more self-conscious. And so, but there I was asked to do this in our little chapel at Mount Washington. And not only did you need to give a service, but also you, you were videoed, filmed, so that afterwards you could look at yourself and make improvements. As you can imagine, I was really prepared for that Sunday service. And above all, I turned to Guru, and I knew that he always comes through if we do our part. And so I was going into the little chapel, the monks were already there, meditation. One of the monks then put the lapel mic on my shirt, and he was just smiling at me, and that made me already feel more relaxed. And then I started the talk after the meditation, just like we do. And in front of me was sitting Brother Nanamoy, just, you know, a, f a few feet apart. And he was just beaming at me. He had this big smile. And to this day, I remember the smile. And there was this twinkling in his eyes, more saying, I know how you feel. Because I felt the same way. <laughs> And his smile was like, I deeply believe in you. You can do it. God and Guru is with you. So whenever I felt a little shaky, I looked at his smile, and everything was okay. So that's a simple, wonderful way of being of service to each other. Now we come to our Bhagavad Gita reading. Krishna says, to men who meditate on me as their very own, ever united to me by incessant worship, I supply their deficiency and make permanent their gains. And Master's commentary, those who are faithful to their creator, perceiving him in all the diverse faces of life, discover that he has taken charge of their lives, even in the smallest detail, and with divine foresight to make smooth their path. So as our Gurdjie says, our sincere effort draws the grace and blessing of God into our lives. And that is the most beautiful way to overcome all fears and concerns. And so in closing, please listen to the words of our Guru, where he says, I plant the seed of love for the divine in those who are in tune with me. Even when I'm gone, my help will always be given to devotees all over the world if they keep in tune. Never think for a moment that when I'm physically absent from you all, I'm not otherwise with you. I shall be just as deeply concerned for your spiritual welfare when I'm no longer in this body as I am now. And I shall always be watching over each one of you. And whenever a true devotee thinks of me in the silent depths of his soul, he will know that I am near. So now let us have a few moments of silence.
Now let us practice together an affirmation. So let us deeply concentrate on the meaning of the words. As our Guru points out, if we do this with deep concentration first with a loud voice and gradually lower our voice, and finally we repeat the affirmation whisper and mentally, we send the power of those words on our journey from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind. And if you are deep, deeply focused, it may even reach the superconscious mind, Master says. And when it reaches that powerful consciousness, these words will come back with reinforced meaning and power and will have the power to change our life. So please repeat after me. I will be calmly active and actively calm. I will meditate regularly to maintain true balance. I will perform all duties serenely, saturated with peace. I will be calmly active and actively calm. I will meditate regularly to maintain true balance. I will perform all duties serenely, saturated with peace. I will be calmly active, actively calm. I will meditate regularly to maintain true balance. I will perform all duties serenely, saturated with peace. I will be actively calm, calmly active. I will meditate regularly to maintain true balance. I will perform all duties serenely, saturated with peace. I will be calmly active, and actively calm. I will meditate regularly to maintain true balance. I will perform all duties serenely. Saturated with peace, I will be actively calm, calmly active. I will meditate regularly to maintain true balance. I will perform all duties serenely, saturated with peace. Now, please continue repeating it mentally. Let us take some time to pray for all those who are in need of help and for world peace.
please rise for the healing service. Let us pray. Divine Mother, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their bodies. Let us raise our arms and let us chant Om for healing of the body. Om. For healing of the mind. Om. And for healing of the soul. Let us chant on for world peace and harmony. Oh. Now let us close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswaji, our Guru, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Divine Mother, Beloved Guru, we deeply thank you for your countless blessings, for your unconditional love, for your spiritual family. May thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion. And may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om. Peace. Amen. So Jai Guru. Jai Guru.